Royal Flash by George MacDonald Frazier, book review. So this is the second book in the Flashman series. I enjoyed the first book in the series, so now I'm moving on to the second book. Although, this book is considerably different than the one before it. The previous book, the original Flashman, was heavily peppered with historical people and places. It was historical fiction, but it was just chock full of real events, real battles, real people. This book, Royal Flash, however, is much more fictional. And in fact, the book takes place in a fictional kingdom. The story is a parody of the famous 19th century novel, The Prisoner of Zinda, which also takes place in a fictional kingdom. Now, The Prisoner of Zinda, I had never read uh, up until this point in my life. It, it was one of those books that I was always meaning to get around to, but I had never actually sat down and read it. Once I discovered that Royal Flash was a parody of The Prisoner of Zinda, and I think I discovered this from Wikipedia, if memory serves, I thought, okay, well this is a perfect excuse to read Prisoner of Zinda now. I, I've been meaning to read it for years anyways. So I went to the library and I got Royal Zinda, uh, sorry, The Prisoner of Zinda, and I read it at the same time as Royal Flash. I'll review The Prisoner of Zinda in one of the next videos. Um, but just to say now that I think if you're going to read Royal Flash, you should also read The Prisoner of Zinda, if you haven't already read it, uh, because you'll appreciate the humor in Royal Flash so much more, or you'll, you'll appreciate what they're perioding. Uh, the original Prisoner of... First of all, it's just interesting to see all the little parallels and tributes to the original story that uh, George MacDonald Frazier has put into Royal Flash. But secondly, the original Prisoner of Zinda focuses on a Victorian sense of honor, duty, and heroism. So it's particularly amusing to see Flashman, who is the antithesis of all these virtues, thrust into the same position and watch how completely different he reacts than the hero of the Prisoner of Zinda. But as I said in my review of the original Flashman, the humor of this book is more in the general tone and the plot structure. Uh, there's not like a lot of big jokes or big laugh out loud moments, but th there's an irony running throughout. Uh, so, yeah, you're not going to be laughing out loud a lot, but if you can appreciate some ironic humor, you'll like this book. Uh, much of the book takes place in the fictional duchy, duchy of Strakens, and according to Wikipedia, this is the only Flashman story to take place, place in a fictitious location. So all the rest of the Flashman books are grounded in real historical events. This one is the only one that takes place in a fictional kingdom. Uh, however, the beginning of this book and the end of this book uh, still take place in a historical context. So the, the events leading up to where Flashman is in this fictional kingdom all are historical fiction. And then after Flashman gets out and he's back in the quote-unquote real world, uh, that's also historical fiction. Uh, so during those scenes, uh, the revolutions of 1848 play an important part in this book. Uh, you don't actually get to see them. They're more mentioned in passing. Um, but they do have a bit of an impact on the story. Uh, during one of these parts, Karl Marx makes a brief appearance as a rabble-rousing orator haranguing the crowds. So, you know, that was a nice little historical footnote. Sneak Karl Marx into one of the 1848 demonstrations. It did irk me a little bit, though, because I've read a few biographies of Marx, and the impression I got is that Marx was more at home in the library than he was out haranguing the crowds. I mean, he was a radical, to be sure, but he wasn't like one of these radicals who's out on the street corners yelling at people. He was more one of these radicals who's in the London library writing his manifesto. So I think maybe George MacDonald Frazier 
drop the ball on that portrayal slightly, but you know, I'm not an expert. Uh, let, let me know if I'm wrong about this. If, if there is historical evidence that Karl Marx did enjoy being out on the street corners yelling at people. Uh, Richard Wagner also appears briefly in this book. Richard Wagner is another historical figure I find fascinating. Uh, I'm reading uh, Being Wagner at the moment. Uh, I'll get to this book in a different video. Uh, and the other big historical vi uh, figures in this book are Otto von Bismarck and Lola Montez. Uh, Bismarck is a fascinating portrayal. I, I'd already read about Bismarck in some of the books I've read on the Paris Commune. And I'm not sure I learned much more about Bismarck than I hadn't already known, but it was a very interesting fictional portrayal of him. Lola Montez I also knew about briefly. Uh, she had popped up in the book The Revo Revolutions of 1848 by Priscilla Robertson, a book I've also talked about on this channel. But George MacDonald Frazier thinks she's a very fascinating historical figure. Uh, and she plays a major part in this book, and through both uh, her literary portrait in the book and also the extensive end notes at the back of this book, I felt like I got a much better portrait of who she was, her impact on, on history, and what kind of person she was from reading this, this book. Uh, the other real history I learned from this book was about the... I'm going to mispronounce this the Schleswig-Holstein question, uh, which was a real historical issue uh, that has a big impact on the fictional storyline in this book. Uh, I'm not going to try and summarize it. You can look it up on Wikipedia or you can read this Royal Flash book. Um, other than to say it was something I previously knew nothing about and something I learned a lot about, uh, something I learned a little about from reading this book. So, all in all, another very interesting book in the Flashman series. I, I found it quite fascinating.